Dear students, today we are going to discuss about wave energy conversion system. So, in this lecture primarily we will be discussing about the working of a wave energy conversion system, then origin, then what are different classifications and then how we can develop the mathematical expression for estimation of power developed and then we will be solving few numerical problems to get into the process of design of a wave energy conversion system. So, in introduction we must know how wave is generated and then how energy transfer is taking place. So, wave is caused by the transfer of energy from surface winds to the sea. The rate of energy transfer depends on the wind speed and the distance over which it interacts with water. The power in the wave is directly proportional to the square of its amplitude and to the period of motion. The energy stored is dissipated through friction at shore and turbulence depending on the characteristics of wave and water depth. The large waves in deep sea lose energy quite slowly and can effectively store it for many days and transmit it over great distance. The wave energy in open ocean is luckily to be inaccessible that we should know and the wave power is usually expressed in kilowatts per meter not in kilowatt per square meter. And also if we talk about the resource near the coastline which is estimated to be about 2 million megawatt. So, which is very very huge. Again the few factors which determines the strength of an individual wave are speed of wind, then time of wind and distance of wind. So, what does it mean when we say speed of wind? It is something like faster the wind is travelling, bigger will be the wave. Then time of wind is something like the wave will get larger, longer the duration of wind hitting it. And the distance of wind is something like further the wind travels against the wave which is known as fats, the bigger will be the wave. So, these phenomenons are important in order to know the magnitude of the wave what is generated. If we look back to the histories, the first known patent to use wave energy was filed in Paris by Paris Simon Girard and his son in 1799, it is long back. The modern scientific pursuit of wave energy was pioneered by Yoshio Masuda's experiments in 1940. In 1980s, first generation prototype were tested in C. And in 2008, the first experimental wave firm was operated in Portugal. So, this is the man who actually first patented the concept of wave energy, P. D. Simon Girard. Now, let us learn the difficulties in developing the wave energy or wave power. So, first is the irregularity of wave patterns in amplitude, phase and direction which makes it difficult to extract power efficiently. The power extraction system is exposed to occasional extreme stormy conditions. During unusual extreme conditions, the wave amplitude may reach as high as 10 times the normal value. If 
amplitude is varying 10 times, then you can see this power is varies 10 square. So, it will be 100 times. So, this happens when tsunami like situation happens. So, which is not good for this kind of plant. The peak power of deep water waves is available in open sea, where it is difficult to construct, operate and maintain a system and transmit power to the shore. This is one of the biggest challenges. And the fourth challenge is like slow and irregular motion of wave is required to be coupled to an electrical generator requiring high and constant speed motion. So, here wave is not uniform, it varies. So, how to make it operational? It is one of the challenges. Now, let us study the power in waves before we start the classifications and study one by one. So, what is wave power? It is something like the transport of energy by ocean surface waves and capture of the energy to do useful work. It may be to generate electricity or may be for water desalination or may be pumping of water into reservoirs. So, there are many activities you can do first if you can produce useful work right. So, how to now derive this expression for power in waves. So, let us write the wave motion may be expressed by using the general traveling wave equation wave equation. So, we can write y is equal to a sin twice pi by lambda minus twice pi by t multiplied by t. So, this is the expression where y is the displacement above mean sea level and this will be in meter and A is the amplitude which is in meter and lambda is wavelength again this is in meter and T is in period which is in second and T is time which is also in second ok. So, this equation equation 1 can also be written something like y is equal to a sin of k x minus omega into t ok. This is x is missing here right. So, this may be equation number 2. So, here k is nothing but twice pi by lambda and omega is equal to twice pi by t. So, this is nothing but wave number and this is angular velocity. which is in radian per second. So, now as the wave moves in linear direction along x direction, so every particle 
of water will move in the direction which undergoes a circular motion of radius a. So, it is something like you can say. So, if we consider a particle it will actually ro rotate something like this and it will move towards x direction and slowly though this will this way it will reduce the diameter of the circle and it will reach the bottom of the ocean. Okay. So, this is something like a this is the radius and this will be rotating something like this and if we make a line here and you can see something like this and of course, it will be ok. So, this will be our depth of water ok and this is mean sea level mean sea level this is mean sea level ok. So, it will rotate something like this that means, any particle we take then it will give a circular motion of radius a which is nothing but the amplitude of the wave ok. So, if you write the wave it will be something like this. So, if we consider the point 1 start from maybe here at this point this may be P 1, this may be P 2, this may be P 3 and this may be P 4. So, it will move something like P 1, P 2 then P 3 then we will have P 4 and again it will be P 1 right and this will be the amplitude ok and this is y and this is x. If it moves along the x direction it will give a circular motion of radius a which is equivalent to the amplitude ok and its angular speed will be omega, omega will be angular speed speed right. So, now if we make the analysis for wavelength of a travelling wave then how to make it and also we must know while the wave propagates in the x direction there is no net flow of water ok. Now, the wavelength of a travelling wave can be expressed something like lambda is equal to twice pi into z divided by omega square. So, equation number 3 and the period of motion motion is t is equal to twice pi by omega which will be equal to square root of twice pi lambda by g ok. So, very easily we can demonstrate it and also we can say that lambda is equal to 1.561 1 into t square. This may be equation number 4 ok. And if we are interested to find out the linear velocity 
of the crest uh, particle at the crest of the wave which is nothing but a is omega this is the linear velocity right so this may be v okay now the wave velocity in the direction x is something like is equal to twice pi so lambda by t which is equal to again omega by k which is equal to z by omega. So, we can very easily simplify this. So, from here we can say that this wave velocity is independent of amplitude of the wave. Okay. The wave velocity does not depend on amplitude. Now, we can consider a unit width of wave front. So, maybe you can draw it something like this. And then So, this is unit width of the wave front this width is 1 that is why it is unit and this is the wave surface. So, we can give this kind of hat line to represent this wave surface and we consider one element here which is located z from the center line of the wave and this is located at a distance of x from here and this may be del x and we can say this is del z. So, area of this segment is dx multiplied by dz okay? and also this is moving from minus z to plus z this is minus z part this is plus z part. Okay? and this is the wavelength. So, here x is something like lambda by 2 here and this h if we represent the waveform which is the vertical distance that means displacement above the Minchi level this h is equal to a sin of k x. Okay. So, this is the waveform pattern right. 
So, this shows the wave surface of one wavelength and unit width at any instant of time, right. So, here particle displacement of the particle what we are considering is represented by h is equal to a sin of k x. So, this is may be at t is equal to 0 second ok. And if we consider this element here the mass of water of that element or you can say the element of water mass small elements we have considered in this wave form in this wave font. So, it will be something like density and then we have d x and d z ok because density is in k z per cubic meter d x is in meter and meter and unit width is 1 ok that is how it is in k z ok an element of water mass will be something like this and this is located at a distance x and height z has moved from minus z to plus z ok. So, because of this the potential energy of that element will be we have rho d x d z multiplied by this is mass this is z k z meter per second square and then we will have since it is going from minus z to plus z. So, it will be 2 z. So, this is z ok. So, now what we will do we will find out the total potential energy in one wavelength per unit width the total potential energy in one wavelength per unit width of the wave front which is nothing but E p is equal to integration of x is equal to 0 to x is equal to lambda y 2 and then we have to use double integral z is equal to 0 to z is equal to h rho d x d z z into twice z ok. So, this may be equation number may be I will say a here and if we simplify it then it will be rho into z then we will have z z is like z square by 2 this is h ok. So, it is something like x is equal to 0 to x is equal to lambda y 2. So, this dz this is h square dx ok. So, we know h is equal to a sin of k x ok. So, h square will be a square sin square k x ok. So, now if we have to solve this then we have to modify this expression x is equal to 0 to x is equal to lambda by 2 then it will be 1 minus sin square theta is equal to 1 minus cos of theta 
or maybe we can have 2 here and theta is nothing but just since it is 2 k x. Okay. Here. Okay. So, if we solve this then what we will get E p will be 1 by 4 rho z a square into lambda. Okay. So, this may be equation number b. right? So, I hope you got it. So, here what you will get is something like z. So, it will be z square by 2 and then this z 2 will be cancel each other that is why it will be h here. Okay. So, you do not have to confuse. Then the potential energy per unit width per unit length of the wave front is something like I will write the potential energy per unit length and per unit width at wave front that is per unit surface area which is given by E p is equal to 1 by 4 rho z a square. Okay. This may be equation number c. And also in the harmonic motion or in a harmonic motion average kinetic energy and potential energy contribution sir equal thus kinetic energy per unit area will be same which is E k is equal to 1 4 rho z a square. This may be equation number d. Now, the total energy per unit surface area area will be E is equal to E p plus E k. So, if you substitute this to value 1 4 rho z a square plus 1 4 rho z a square then it will be rho z square. This is the total energy per unit surface area. Okay. Now, if we have to find out the power then how to do the calculation? The power carried forward per unit width of wave front will be P is equal to E into U which is nothing but half rho z a square into V by 2. Okay. So, this may be equation number F here U is equal to V by 2 is called a group velocity.
group velocity of deep water waves that is the velocity at which the energy in the group of waves is carried forward okay now we can rewrite the expression so p is equal to rho z square divided by 8 pi multiplied by a square into t. So, again we can write in terms of lambda by substituting the values of t then it will be something like rho z square root of z then it will be 4 twice pi multiplied by a square root delta this will be kilowatt per meter is p because as we know this wave power is calculated in kilowatt per meter right so from here we can conclude many thing like uh, this wave power is uh, directly proportional to the square of the amplitude and to the period of wave right so the attraction for a large period and large amplitude of wave power engineers is apparent okay so normally for annual average wave power we use like megawatt hour per meter so that is how we need to find out. So, this actually you know, gives us the wave power and finally what we will get when we have been asked to calculate the wave power for a particular case then what finally we want is megawatt hour per meter ok. So, that we should keep in mind right. Now, let us move to the different schemes by which we can harvest this energy like energy in the waves is harnessed basically in the form of mechanical energy using wave energy converters also known as wave devices or wave machines. The fluctuating mechanical energy obtained is modified to drive a generator to produce electricity right. So, there are different ways of doing the classifications. So, first is depending upon the location it may be offshore or deep water devices or may be shoreline devices and depending upon the position with respect to the sea level we can have floating device, we can have submerged device or may be partially submerged device. Also we can classify based on the actuating motion used in capturing the wave power. It may be heaving float type, may be pitching type or may be heaving and pitching float type and oscillating water column type. And lastly we will have surge devices. So, we will discuss one by one. So, for heaving float type systems we can have this kind of configurations. So, there will be one buoy which floats and there is a string which is connected to a air pump ok. So, air goes in and then because of this movement of the wave so it will be pumped and pressure will be increasing and this will be stored in a compressed air vessel and this can be used when required. So, this is not shown here so this can be taken out through another arrangement and we can use the compressed air for generation of electricity by coupling a turbine with a generator ok. So, this is one scheme and this is called float with air pump that is why it is said a float placed on the surface of water heaps up and down with waves due to rise and fall of the water level. So, once it goes up and down what happens it will give something like pumping of the 
air and this will be stored. So, this vertical motion is used to operate a piston on an air pump through linkage and pump is anchored to the seabed and this is anchored in the seabed. Okay. So, several float operated air pumps are used to store energy in a compressed storage system and then this compressed air is then used to generate electricity through an air turbine coupled to a generator. And one more schemes we have. So, this float is here, it is buoy and it will oscillate. So, water come in and then it will pump. So, in this case water is coming, this is water and it will pump the water and it will store in a reservoir and then this can be used for generation of electricity. It is something like pump hydro system. So, we can have some kind of head and we can install turbine generator system to produce electricity. This is the another scheme for generation of electricity by using this heaving float type. We can have pitch type. So, in pitching type devices wave strikes horizontally on a floating piece or flap known as nodding duct. The several nodding ducts are hinged to a common flexible linkage to form a nodding duct assembly. So, it appears something like this. So, these are actually you no know, nodding ducts and these are connected. Okay. So, as the wave enters the assembly, so when wave comes, it turns the ducts in the direction of motion of the waves. The duct swings backward when the trough of the wave once the peak has passed over it. It then oscillates about its axis and russet and wheel mechanism converts the motion of the duct to a common shaft. The power collected by individual ducts is used to drive a generator through linkage and gear mechanism. So, this russet and wheel mechanism is something like to provide unidirectional movement of the device. Okay. So, this is pole and this is the rotor and this will not allow to rotate in the other direction. It is to maintain unidirection. So, this arrangement is here, this is russet wheel and this key is there which locks the disc and then sometimes we can use spring to control the position of the groove. The shape of the duct is optimized to extract maximum power. Okay. So, these are the ducts. The main advantage of this system is that during large waves the ducts can flip and recover again. So, it can flip if the amplitude is very high, but it can be bring back to the original position with a minimum effort. We have heaving and pitching float type configurations. So, here a special shape float device known as dolphin buoy writes the wave and rolls as well as helps as the wave passes. So, two motions like rolling and heaving are converted into unidirectional motion by a reset wheel arrangement and used to operate stationary and floating generator respectively. So, this is the floating generator and this is stationary generator. So, this is the buoy and wave will come like this and it will also float. Okay. So, that is why it is shown this rolling motion and because of this no shaft will rotate and it will generate electricity and we have two arrangement flo floating generator and then stationary. So, both are finally used to generate electricity and also we have another configurations. So, large waves comes and strike on the float okay, and it will operate this hydraulic pump and then the arrangement of taking the water from here to the reservoir is not shown. So, this water actually takes to the reservoir and store it and finally, we can use it for 
power generation whenever required. So, we have oscillating water column type. So, here what happens we make this kind of arrangement to run a air turbine. So, here what happens water entered to this channel and then air inside this duct is compressed and this turbine start rotating and producing electricity. And when this waves goes off then again there is a pressure difference and because of that again turbine will rotate. So, both ways we can generate electricity, but here we are not using water only air is compressed and air turns the rotor and produce electricity. So, arrangement you can see here. So, that is how it is mentioned the device comprises of a partially submerged concrete or steel structure which has an opening to the sea below the water line where it encloses a column of air above the water column. So, water comes here and water is not allowed to enter after a certain distance from the entry of the water. The wave impeding the device causes the water column to rise and fall which alternatively compresses or depressurizes the air column. The compression and decompression of the air allows for the rotation of a turbine and this turbine is called Wells turbine which drives the generator to produce electricity. What are the primary advantages of this scheme is the air velocity can be increased by reducing the cross section of the air channel thus the slow wave motion can be coupled to high speed turbine motion. And the turbine generator assembly is kept away from the marine water environment because the water is not allowed to pass through the turbine. So, aquatic plants or fishes cannot go to the turbine area. Again we will have a surge device. So, how it is performed? So, our primary intention is to fill this reservoir. So, we have this configuration waves comes in and it will spill over and it will maintain certain head in order to operate this turbine. Okay. And then finally, we have to reject the water from the powerhouse. Okay. So, it is like when a moving wave is constricted a surge is produced rising its amplitude. So, amplitude rises such devices are known as tapered channel device or tap sen. So, the tap sen comprises a gradually narrowing channel. So, this is the gradually narrowing channel with wall height 3 to 5 meter above mean sea level. This wall height is about 3 to 5 meter above mean sea level. The wave enters from the wide end of the channel and as they progresses or as they propagates towards narrower region the amplitude rises until the crests spill over the wells to a reservoir. So, this is the reservoir. So, we need to fill the reservoir which is maintained at a fixed head to operate the turbine which is housed in the powerhouse. The reservoir provides a stable supply to a low head turbine. right? So, now let us discuss about the global distribution of mean sea waves. So, this is the distribution and you can see the potential that means if we say in India it is about 15 kilowatt hour per meter in most of these coastal areas and if we see like this place is about 60 kilowatt per meter this may be 100 kilowatt per meter if we build a plant here then our things will be more no energy potential is very very high but at the same time installation and maintenance 
of the plant is very very critical if we go beyond a certain distance from the seashore. So, if we talk about status in India, the wave energy program was started in 1983 with preliminary studies in IIT Madras and oscillating water column schemes was found to be the best as per the studies made in Indian context. A 150 kilowatt pilot plant oscillating water column was built near Trivandrum, Kerala in 1991 and a plant of 1.1 megawatt electrical is being developed at the same site. So, these are the potential sites, red indicates the highest followed by the blue colors. So, here it is about 20 to 25 in this region kilowatt per meter and lowest is about 0 to 5 kilowatt per meter. Okay. So, we have potential in this belt. So, there are some advantages and disadvantages with this technology. Some of the advantages of this wave energy is the availability of large energy fluxes, predictability of wave conditions over period of days, wave energy is renewable and it is environmental friendly. What are the disadvantages? It is suitable to certain locations, we cannot prescribe this technology for all the locations even though we have seas around. Effect on marine ecosystem, because if we are installing the devices under ocean then of course, marine ecosystem will be not so convenient. Then intermittent nature, so we cannot get the continuous energy, then higher maintenance cost. So, what are the environmental impacts if this kind of plant is installed? Wave power is essentially non-polluting, the no environmental effects are seen from floating wave power devices. Onshore wave energy installations may damage visual landscape and degrade scenic ocean front and it may cause disturbances to marine life including changes in distribution and types of life near shore. Also possible threat to navigation from collision due to low profile floating wave devices. So, now with this let us solve one problem. So, it goes something like a deep ocean wave of 2 meter peak to peak appears at a period of 8 second. We need to find the wavelength, phase velocity and power associated with the wave. So, at this power at we need to find out the available average energy density. So, now what are the things given to us here is amplitude which is A is equal to 2 by 2 is 1 meter. So, peak to peak is 2 meter and period is T is equal to 8 second okay. and we can consider density of water which is sea water is about 1025 kg per cubic meter. Then we can calculate the angular velocity which is nothing but omega is twice pi by t and this will be something like we have twice pi by 8 0.78539 radian per second. Again the 
wavelength of a traveling wave which is nothing but lambda is twice pi z by omega square. So, if you substitute the value of omega here is twice pi 9.81 and then omega is 0 0.78539 square. So, this will be found to be 99.9238 meter. Okay. So, if you know this then we can find out what is phase velocity. The phase velocity of the wave which is nothing but lambda by twice pi omega lambda by twice pi lambda by t omega by k and then z by omega. So, either of the expressions can be used maybe if you can use z by omega is fine 9.81 by 0 0.78539. So, this will be about 12.49 meter per second. So, now we can calculate the power in the wave. So, this is mathematically expressed as p is equal to rho z square 8 pi a square multiplied by t. So, if you substitute those values like 1 0 to 5 multiplied by 9.81 square then we will have 2 into 3.14 multiplied by you will have a is 1 then t is 8. So, what you will get is the power in the wave. So, it will be about 31.399 kilowatt per meter. So, now if you know the number of hours of operation per day then you can calculate for per month and then finally, if you know the average time of operation then you can find out what is annual average wave energy. So, for finding the average annual wave energy which is something like p into hour okay this is time so so maybe if we consider 31.399 kilowatt hour per meter and if we say for example per day if we run for 8 hours and we can find out. So, uh, in 30 days it will be 240 hours. Okay. So, we can do anything. So, time if you multiply then what you will get in kilowatt hour per meter right. So, this 1 kilowatt is 1 unit right. So, from that also you can see in price right how much money you can generate out of this energy generation. Okay. Maybe we can solve one more problem like a wave power plant is set up near the coast of Indian state of Gujarat. A progressive sea wave has an amplitude of 3 meter and wave width is 90 meter and time period is 6 second density of sea water is 1025 kg per cubic meter and we can calculate total energy in the wave then wave power and if dolphin type wave energy converters are used 
for harnessing wave energy in plant and are installed along the width of 650 meter, we need to calculate the installed capacity of the plant. And in the fourth question, if the capacity of the single dolphin type wave energy converter is 100 kilowatt, we need to calculate the total number of dolphin type wave converter required. So, we have been given amplitude, then width and time. Okay? So, total energy contained in a wave, we can calculate by using this expression and we can substitute the values and we can find out E is about 228.704 megajoule and wave power is given as total energy in the wave to the time period. So, once we know the total energy in the wave, we can calculate this wave power because time period is known to us which is found to be 38.117 megawatt and for calculation of installed capacity. So, we have to use this expression where B is the plant width. So, this also given to us. So, we can find out what is the installed capacity of the plant which is about 61.074 megawatt. And now, what we want to calculate is the number of dolphin type wave energy converters. So, it is 61.074 multiplied by 1000 divided by 100. So, it is about 611 dolphin type converters are required to meet the demand. Right? So, uh, this problem is shown for dolphin type converters. So, similar way we can proceed for other configurations for wave power development. Okay? So, with this we would like to summarize what we have discussed today. We have demonstrated how wave power is calculated and also we have seen that the power in the wave is directly proportional to the square of the amplitude and to the period of motion. The irregularity of wave patterns in amplitude, phase and directions makes it difficult to extract power efficiently because it is not a constant flow of waves. So, it is time dependent. So, you cannot expect the continuous power generation. That is a big issue for this kind of arrangement and this wave power is expressed in kilowatt per meter. In Indian context, oscillating water column was found to be best as per the report. And also we must know the energy flux in case of wave power is superior compared to solar, biomass, wind or any other renewable energy systems. So, I hope you got an overview of this technology and the ways of solving problems in relation to the design of wave energy conversion system. So, thank you very much for watching this video. Thank you.